welcome. This is Mouskinner, and we're back with some more The Long Journey Home. Why is this filter misaligned? Oh, Captain Winters, I appreciate the help, but please leave priority repairs to the Grease Monkey, please. <laughs> All right, well, we're picking up where we left off, and current status fuel is low, but we do have some hydrogen to refuel if. We choose to use that we're good as far as the exotic materials i don't feel like i have to mine anything uh anymore for that but i would like to find another source of hydrogen and metals being pretty key too as paul did take quite a bit of a beating in that ill-advised combat that i stayed probably longer than i should have all right well Ship system wise, we did manage to repair one of the lander systems. I would have preferred to repair the ship engine problem, which is going to affect our autopilot efficiency. But for now, I think we're going to need to find those resources, uh, specifically metals to repair our hull, because looking over in the lab, although we have means to repair some injuries, we don't really have anything here that's going to help our ship hull. We have something that will help our lander hull but uh, not really usable for that. All right, let's go ahead and take a look, look at the map. So we have explored these two planets that are circling around this larger planet that uh, has too much of a gravity well to really do much with. We could go over to that other star quite a bit away from where we are right now, probably consume a lot of fuel to do so. And I don't know if it's going to have the materials we're looking for. Now, copper and iron are in this system, but they could possibly only be on planets that are too large or have too much of a gravity for us to really uh, take a look at them. It's possible this other planet is something we can do, but it looks to be the same size as the other two planets in the system, which were having too much of a gravity well for us to deal with. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and exit, and we're gonna head in that direction. We'll see what I can do as far as that goes, although I'm gonna have to fight the gravity well of this rather large planet here, which is already sucking me down in. Okay, and then we need to correct our trajectory going all the way over here. And I have a, quite a lot of speed for this, but it's speed that may drop off as we have gravity wells pull on us. There was a ship that went by that uh, we may have wanted to contact. And I don't remember if I did contact that ship or not. It's been a little while, uh, a few days since uh, the last time I recorded, so I'm trying to remember where we left off. Now, it looks like that guy is moving around the system, although it could be more than one contact. I wasn't really paying attention to the minimap there. But if it does happen to cross our path, we'll, we'll encounter it and see what's going on there. Could mean habitation. I don't think it's the... Uh, what was the name of the race? I can actually check that. The Wolfax. Oh, I think they just jumped out anyway, because that was what the noise was when I was going into my menu. So we're under half a tank of fuel, and the hydrogen that I currently have is really not going to be enough to... refuel us too much more, I don't think. Now, according to this map, there should also be hydrogen, helium, krypton, and nitrogen, and we have not encountered that on any of the planets that we have. We need to slow this sucker down, and we need to start aiming ourselves towards this planet, continuing to slow the heck down, burning a lot of our fuel to do so. And I may be able to get the autopilot to behave. No. And that, I think, is our inefficiency coming back to haunt us. But this may be a better course. I could slow it down slightly. 
Okay, I did manage to get us in there. Well, we do have hydrogen. That is a, going to be very important to us. Risk is low, though, because the temperatures are very high. We do not have a problem with gravity, though. So as long as I get in and out, I, uh, we may be able to make this happen. Uh, let's just go ahead and take a look at the quarters. Make sure we have the proper person being our lander pilot, which it appears we have Malcolm doing that job. So I think we're good to go. Again, temperatures are going to be high, giving us some risk. We'll have to keep an eye on that. But hopefully it's a, wor a risk worth taking as there is gas that we can take advantage of. I do not recall what kind of gas it was. All right, average gravity. So I am still going to have to fight our vertical speed. Looks like we are coming in hard. Don't like that. Little bit of a bump. Let's get over to that gas. I probably do not want to go into the lava. That would, that's pretty clear. Okay. A little bit of more of a smack. We are taking damage to our, oh, and Malcolm Winters has burns. That's not good. We should be able to treat that. We got some hydrogen. We're going to have to stick here, though, unfortunately. Get as much of this hydrogen we, as we conceivably can, as this is pretty crucial to the mission at this point. Maybe one more bit here. Ah. I may just have to leave here. Okay, yeah, we're done. He's got two burns. We're done. And we have half lander hull. So the lander hole, I don't think is as big of a deal. I think it's more just the burn injuries that we're racking up here. It would have been nice to get a little bit more hydrogen, but under that kind of pressure, I think it's better that we just left. Okay, well, the important thing here is that we got the hydrogen we were looking for. The downside is hydrogen is not particularly good for refueling. Now I do get to see through the lab this should be able to treat burns. Does it treat both burns or does it just treat one? I am very curious to find out. So we're going to go ahead and use this now. Okay, so I feel much better. It treated all burns. Okay, so that we're gonna be uh, taking forward in the future. Medical kits will treat all injuries suffered. So it's probably a good idea to keep them around uh, until you've racked up enough injuries that it starts being a problem that could cause a crew member to die. Now, obviously, if you wait too long and you don't have a injury that you expect come about, well, you could lose that crew member uh, and some events will rack up injuries quickly or you'll have more than one injury happen at once so it can be hard to predict such things but it was worth I think trying also there are some injuries that uh, that medical kit is not going to cover as I've discussed in other videos okay so we do have our hydrogen I don't see any reason why not to burn at least that rose worth the hydrogen I'm going to keep the full row of hydrogen for now now I'm a little bit concerned that there is going to be no other resource for us to get any other gases. I, I think it's uh, safe to guess that the other planet here is going to have a very extreme gravity, and as a result, it will not be safe to go down and try and collect any gases that may be there. So I think we just go ahead and get out of here, get out of the system. And I am going to jump. Now, the one thing that we have in spades is exotic materials. So we're good there. But I am a little bit concerned for the future of our mission. Just because of how much damage we took. How many of our resources we had to burn. Now, this is attractive both because it has uh, blue and gray resources. Metal and gas. Just gas here. We've got all three types. And they look like they're relatively smaller planets. I think that's another thing I'm going to need to... start taking a stock of. Is the actual size of the planet. So we see here... those medium-sized planets were... 
tended to have higher gravities than we could really deal with. It seems like the smallish, the smallish sized planets are the best bets for us. These ones seem like they are that medium size, so maybe problematic for us? It's hard to say. I mean, the system that we started in had those size of planets, and those were both planets that we could land on. So it's possible the molten nature of these planets is part of the issue. So if we go over here, we have... Two other types of planets that might work out for us. Now, I'm not really interested in the carbonates and the silicates, to be honest with you. I really am more interested in the uh, gases and the metals. I think this is probably going to be our best bet, though. If we continue in this direction, as it has three planets... That makes me feel like we have a higher chance of finding a planet that has the proper gravity. Brown dwarf star, I don't really know what to expect. Uh, someone in the stream said that's not even a real star. Uh, but I'm going to assume it's not quite as big as a red giant. We'll have to see. We do have some wear and tear to our ship, unfortunately. So that's going to be two systems that are damaged on our ship. We'll take a look at that as we jump in here. One thing that may help us is if we encounter a station of some kind. Because we can pay to refuel, as we do have some credits at this point. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to burn some of the resources here, the carbonates, so that I have a full slot in my ship's cargo. And that did carry us a little bit into that third circle. Okay, with that being done... Let's take a look at our bridge. So we now have resource processing. So mineral conversion rate is going to be affected. This is actually really bad because this is the thing that we actually really need to do. We need mineral conversion because mineral conversion is how we're going to be repairing our ship. So that's a little bit of a problem. You know what? I think I'm just going to let us slingshot here for now. I was going to try and correct the course, but I think we're just going to uh, allow ourselves to move with the current trajectory. If it looks like I'm going to fall into the star, I'll give us a little bit of a boost. But uh, I'm just going to maintain this orbit of the star until I get into an intercept with one of these planets. As a matter of fact, I'm going to try and push my orbit out a little bit. Because I think trying to entirely arrest my momentum and taking myself the other way is something I've been doing a lot and I I feel like I've been wasting fuel by doing that. I'm just going to carry ourselves around. It's going to take us a little bit longer to get where we want to go, but in the end, it looks like there's a lot of activity around that uh, light blue planet, the ice planet. So we may find aliens there. While you're aboard this ship, you represent... Okay... Earth, I and -A, I A S A in that order. Okay, let's uh, let's move our trajectory a little bit here, and we need to slow way the heck down and move it out a little bit, way down and out. It looks like I collided a little bit there. Yeah, see, that's not what you want to have happen. So I'm burning fuel unnecessarily. And this might even be a, a planet that I can't even orbit. I need to give ourselves a little bit of speed so that we do not run into it again. This is uh, very challenging. Because I am burning way more fuel than I had intended. Okay. So, mission forecast is deadly. Again, gravity is very high. This could be the molten planets. I... I thought there was a possibility that going in this direction would be a waste of resources. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip out right about now and we'll start going this way. We desperately need a change of, of course here in this playthrough if we're going to survive. We need fuel badly. 
How we get it, I'm not really concerned about. Okay, again, this planet may have too much of a gravity well for us, so... This is just luck of the draw, I think. Yeah, gravity's too much. We gotta jump out of the system. I don't have a choice. These planets are too big. But I didn't have any other planets that would have fit the bill, so... We're gonna have to leave the system and look for one that has smaller planets, so... I could try... The last planet here... The ice planet, but that could be a waste of resources. Yeah, I think I have to go for it. Let's let's try. This is where our only gas resources may be, though, so... But there's a possibility that there's alien activity here, so... There is something chasing me. Hopefully it is friendly. May not actually be coming after me though, because it didn't near me too much. Let's try and turn and slow down. But these uh, planets look a lot bigger now that I'm seeing them. That looks like we're going to have to. We are fuel warning now. Let's see if we can contact this guy. Okay, I think they contacted me rather than the other way around. We're going to have to react very quickly, though, if we want to get in this planet's orbit. I'm going to have to start slowing down, and I don't have a lot of distance to do that after this encounter. Okay. They're going to answer the call. All right, I am actually familiar with this race. Miserani friendship. Miserani greet humans. Have a gift for humans. Miserani offer gift of friendship. Let Miserani befriend humans. All right, so I know how this race works, so I can actually tell you a little bit about them. I know that kind of spoils it, but you might notice they give us an EM tank. Actually, something I don't need. But if you look very carefully, you see a little bit of a purple thing there. Now, I initially, when I first encountered this race, I, I didn't think anything of the little purple thing the little purple squiggly line there on the picture i thought that was just some wire or something in the graphic well that is actually a worm and if you take that and you use it you'll get an infestation that infestation is non-curable by medicates and every time you encounter this race on planets you have a chance of being infected every time you use an item that is infected you have a chance of getting infected. Just like any other injury, five of these and you're dead. So, in the one stream play I did, uh, I had two crew members die to the infestation. So, these guys are bad. We will decline their gift. Oh, but Miserani is still friends of humans. So, these guys, they can catch you unaware because... They are immediately friendly with you. They, uh, if you ask them about themselves, Miserani explore, Miserani seek home, Miserani grow, Miserani seek friends. So what they do is if you contact them and you show their friends, show friendship towards them, they will follow you wherever you go. When they come to a planet that is suitable for them, they will purposely crash land their, their vessel, and they will infest the vessel. Now, I have no idea what the ramifications of that are if you come to a populated planet. The one playthrough I did, it was an unpopulated planet, but it infested the planet. Going down on the planet, if it is infested, you have a risk of getting in infected. So, these guys can be dangerous. Specifically of towards your crew. All right, so uh, we're going to ask them about their home. Miserani seek home for Miserani human help. Miserani find home. So yeah, I mean, they're looking to infest a planet. And they will follow you around. Well, let's just go ahead and insult them. Miserani not mean. Our Miserani just want to live. And Miserani want to eat. And Miserani want to spread. Is that so wrong of Miserani? All right, we're going to hang up on these guys. And if this one playthrough doesn't go well, the one thing we can pride ourselves on having done is blowing these guys to hell. So, 
Let's get uh, nice and close. That is a pretty big ship, so I don't think we'll be able to kill them. Uh, everything I've ever seen in a playthrough suggests that these guys do not put up a fight. Okay, so they're just going to run. Oh, no, they are fighting us. That is new. Alright, so we actually cannot afford this damage we're taking. But they don't have shields, so... I might actually have to run here because we've taken a lot of damage. And they are jamming us too, so we can't even leave if we wanted to. Come here, punks. They've also infested the planet, so... As you can see, the planet is green like that. Ah, big whiff there. That's one complaint that I have about this game, is there's not a real cl clear indication of where you're aiming. You just kind of have to eyeball it. And that doesn't really work in my mind. So it seems like their weapons are fairly short-ranged. And see, I mostly whiff those shots. So if we stay out of their range, we should be okay. Ow. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to give him one more salvo and then we're out of here if we don't destroy him. So I'm going to be careful and make sure I've got the aim proper. That looks good. Alright, yeah, we're out. Might have burned through a lot of my fuel here too. I tried. I, I wasn't sure that those guys fought back, but every other time I encountered them, they run. They run from you when you fight them, but in this case, they must have had, uh, maybe the other cases they weren't armed, so they just ran. In this case, they were armed and they put up a fight. If I had a better, uh, hull integrity before I did that, uh, maybe. Alright, so we're, we're in a desperate straits here. I think we have no choice but to just get out of here. Oh, they are intercepting us. I didn't really want to engage them, so we're just going to flee. As a matter of fact, may not happen. Alright, that's unfortunate we died. If I was able to get away from them, we would have been okay, but I think that one, this playthrough came to a close because of that encounter with that knight. We were doing actually really well in the early stages, but I think that put us in a, in a bad spot as far as my resources. I had a lot of metal in my cargo that I had to blow and repairing ship systems, and that kind of just made the whole playthrough go downhill. I definitely should have gotten out of that engagement a lot earlier than I did. But I do have some conclusions about that playthrough that I'll share with you. One conclusion I have, I think, is more a criticism of the game. This is something that the developers have kind of indicated with their communications to me, that you have to gauge a mission that you receive and gauge whether or not it's a mission you should take, whether or not it's one that you can conceivably succeed at. And I think the problem is there may not be enough in-game information to actually tell what is a mission that you can succeed at or not. And maybe that's part of the way that they've built this game is that after playing it more, more times, you learn which situations you can and cannot take. But how did I know what kind of size ship he would have? How did I know how armed he was going to be? How did I know it wasn't just some little dinky ship that I could have taken? Why did he offer me a job that I couldn't possibly do? Couldn't he gauge the capacity of my ship and what it could and couldn't do before offering it to me? I think this problem may have a failure in that the, the game itself, and this is, you know, you could go two ways on this. But there are those that could say the game the way it is is fine. And, you know, I'm not going to argue with that too much. But there is also another valid argument that perhaps the game should tailor the difficulty of the missions that you get based off of the stage of the game that you're in. So a good, I think, parallel is FTL. So in FTL, the danger of the opponents that you face are 
even though a lot of it is procedurally generated, is tailored to where you are in the game. Now, I have a feeling that this game does that to some extent, but it doesn't do it enough, perhaps. Maybe it should gauge that difficulty a little bit more with where you are in the game. To give me a mission that I have no chance of success at so early on, and yes, perhaps I should have figured that out. Well, honestly, I did figure that out a lot earlier than I did and run away a lot earlier than I did. Perhaps that was the right course of action. But still, I think that's kind of an unfair turn to give your players that kind of challenge. Also, with the procedural generation here, I think I got kind of screwed. My first system was a pretty good system where I could get a lot of resources, but after that, there wasn't that many systems that I could easily get resources around. The planets were too big, gravity wells too much, I couldn't land. Now, there is stuff that you can buy, modules for your lander, that allows you to land on higher gravity planets, but I'm not likely to have those things so early in the game. So again, perhaps a little bit of tailoring to where you are in the game, rather than give you a totally procedurally generated environment where it could be very cruel to you, fate can be very cruel to you or not. Now, one thing I'm going to do that I have not actually tried, I'm going to try this rewind feature because I've never seen it. I, I didn't really look into it before. I want to see what this does. Because there is no uh, save file system. So if I screw up, that's pretty much it. So I did uh, hit the rewind button. I'm not sure if it's loading in or not. Here we go. Okay, so what it did is it put me in the beginning of this star system, which I think is somewhat forgiving. I like that, actually. So what we can do is we can iron out some of the mistakes I made. And perhaps we'll continue on with this playthrough, even though I think this playthrough is a very challenged one because of that, of that very early encounter. But those are just some things that... I'm bringing forward that maybe can be changed. And keep in mind, this is a pre-release version of the game that I'm playing right now. So some of these things are just balance changes that might need doing, especially as I'm playing on the easiest difficulty. These are balance changes that may need doing so that the game's more approachable. I don't want this game to be easy street by any means. I think the difficulty of it is part of the charm of the game. But at the same time, when you're playing on an easier mode like this to uh, have this kind of luck, I think has the risk of turning players away. So I think that's something that they need to keep in mind, perhaps, and maybe work on in the future. But in any case, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. This is Mouse Gunner, signing out.